Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we are going to talk about a question from Steve Nunn, KK6GKM. And he says he lives uh, in southern Missouri, out, of the, out in the country. Now that area of the country has kind of rolling hills and those can get in the way of line of sight communications and so on. I'm in a small valley surrounded pretty much on all sides by hills. What type of antenna would you recommend? Thanks for your help. Your videos have been very helpful from Steve. Well, here I sit in uh, about 10 miles north of Ridgeway, Colorado, and uh, the mountains completely surround us. I did a little work with the protractor before um, I started putting up antennas. And the thing about the protractor is uh, turning it into something called a theodolite, but basically measuring how far up above your house the hills really are. And even though we've got a 14,000 foot mountain over here called Mount Sneffels, we are um, 15 miles away from it. And we're at 7,000 feet. So a rise of 7,000 feet in 15 miles is not that big a rise. It's only three or four degrees. And so what we want is an antenna, what I want is an antenna that has a radiation angle that's slightly higher than three or four degrees. And guess what? That's just about every antenna. So this is what you need to do. You need to stand on your land, okay, and with some kind of, uh, you can pick up a device like a level. This is a level, okay, so it's got bubbles in it, right? And so you, and you probably need help with this because you need your significant other to be looking at this to make sure it's actually level. You sight down the edge of the level at the mountains, okay? And you put a little stick here that is measured in millimeters or something. So that's probably the most practical. And you determine how high above the level that mountain is. And unless you're in a deep valley, I'm going to guess it's going to be less than three degrees. And you can do the trigonometry to make that thing work. Okay. And uh, this is the thing I have. I live in these great big mountains all around, but they are um, not higher than three degrees from where I am. Now, just about any antenna, if you put up a vertical, which has the lowest angle of radiation, and uh, you're going to have a beam width that's more like 10 degrees, okay? So it just goes right up and over those mountains. And the mountains will push it up a little bit, but not much. Another thing that you might find is even with a dipole, even if you get the dipole to a height of um, one half of the wavelength, in other words, uh, 66 feet for 40 meters, for 40 meters, and you've got a dipole or an inverted V off of that thing, the radiation pattern is still greater, you'll have a lobe, like that, it's still greater than the height of those mountains, okay? So this is what you do. Now, if you are stuck, I mean, you know, <laughs> something like that. I had a friend who had this problem. His job was to manage the flow in the Gunnison Tunnel that went over to Montrose for irrigation water, and he was at the bottom of a very steep canyon. So he and I set up an 80-meter dipole, okay, and it was about 20 feet off the ground. 
Okay, now the thing with an 80 meter dipole at 20 feet, it should be at a half wave, 40 meters or 133 feet high, but then its radiation would just hit the canyon walls and who knows what would happen to it. So this low dipole caused the radiation to be pretty close to straight up. In other words, it was near vertical incident sky wave propagation. And he had great luck with it. It worked very well from the bottom of that canyon. Now, if you're looking for VHF, UHF, you want a line of sight. Let's suppose you're in a little valley here, okay, and you're down here. If there's a repeater here or here, fine. But um, you may have a little trouble getting to a repeater further away. One thing to note is that RF will, be, uh, at, at VHF, will uh, slightly refract this way, okay? This is called the radio horizon, which is about four-thirds uh, the distance of the normal horizon. Okay, so because radio waves at, at VHF tend to hug the uh, curves and then we'll go out that way. So you may be in luck that way. Definitely you want an outdoor antenna for VHF and UHF. Okay, so I think this will get you on the air fairly quickly. So there you have it. Um, it is possible if you are in a depression, a little valley or something, that the hills around you, though they may look large, are not that high above the horizon, in which case you can put in just about any kind of antenna you would like to. Uh, another thing to note is the four-thirds radio horizon, even though a repeater is just over line of sight, an outdoor antenna may be able to hit it just fine. Um, and the thing to do is to go out and try different things. I think you will find in your situation, from what I remember of the hills that you live in, is that they're not real tall, but the country is quite convoluted. Um, and if you are in one of the bottoms of those, you may find that the, end, the hills are not as high above you as you think. Not like the Black Canyon case I showed you earlier. So, uh, let's see what's going on in the channel. We're over 100,000 subscribers now. We do have a giveaway number three. It is for the HF SIGS uh, Micro BITX version 6, complete with case, microphone, and power cord. And that will go to one of the people. These are the entries that I have already. And we'll be doing our drawing on the 29th. So that means that you should send your uh, postcard or letter or whatever um, by snail mail no later than about a week prior to the drawing because uh, the post office is getting really wonky on its delivery times. Um, and it's explaining, it's telling us it's all for our good. So I guess we'll just have to think it's all for our good and feel warm and fuzzy about the very slow post office. They give new meaning to the term snail mail. So there you have it. Um, please subscribe, please click like, please tell others about this video series. And until we next meet, 73.